Hello and welcome back to the Uncommon Sense Show. Today we're going to be talking about vitamin C and how it affects our health. There's a study that was done in 2000 and it looked at the relation between the heart and vitamin C. And there's this news article that talks about this study. We're going to actually look at the study rather than the news article because sometimes news articles are not always accurate to the actual study. This news article actually misses a crucial point in the actual study. That's why it's important that we don't just actually take the news article, we actually look at the study. This is the actual study that that news article was based on. Differing relations to early atherosclerosis between vitamin C from supplements versus food in the Los Angeles atherosclerosis study. Now, if you don't know what atherosclerosis is, you probably do because it's prevalent. Um, over 3 million cases in Americans per year. It's considered the narrowing of blood vessel, but this is not actually a correct term because the blood vessels doesn't actually narrow. What happens is plaque builds up in the artery wall and it causes an obstruction of blood flow. And finally, when that blood flow is to the point where it cannot get through, it causes serious issues. It can cause ruptures then you can have a heart attack. I find this study fascinating because it actually does something that I wish every study that had to do with vitamins and minerals did. And it looks at vitamins in the food itself versus from supplementation. It says oxidative stress and endothelial dysfunction play a critical role in pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Dietary vitamin C appears to have antioxidant properties and beneficial relations to endothelial function. Yeah, vitamin C taken as a vitamin supplement does not appear to protect from cardiovascular events. The impact of vitamin C intake from supplements versus food on progression of atherosclerosis is unknown. They say it's unknown, but then the study pretty much concludes that it is actually known. The conclusion of the study, vitamin C supplementation is associated with accelerated early atherosclerosis. But they conclude in contrast to the adverse association of vitamin C supplements, vitamin C intake from food had a weak but protective relationship on carotid IMT progression, which is reduced progression. So essentially what they're saying is that they're saying that vitamin C from food is weak, but even though it's weak, it does have a protective relationship in regards to carotid IMT progression. In other words, a protective in to the heart. So it has a protective effect on the heart. Now, they say it's weak. It's not. If you look at all the studies, it's anything but weak. Um, it plays a huge role. But the important thing that is often missed is it isn't just vitamin C. It isn't like you just take, eat 50 pounds of oranges and your heart is healthy. You need a bunch of different vitamins and minerals. You need a variety of foods to protect your heart. I will be doing more videos on protecting the heart. There are some amazing foods in nature that actually have an amazing protective ability on the heart. There's one food specifically that actually has the ability to create a wall of nutrition around the heart. So even if you have a heart attack, the damage is greatly reduced during the time that you have a heart attack. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to be doing a video on that in the near future. I would highly recommend the reading of a book called Vitamin C, A Lesson in Keeping an Open Mind by Elizabeth Selmer. An amazing book. She has another uh, book, The Essential Guide to Vitamins and Minerals. Absolutely amazing. High quality research. Could probably have done a little better job on indexing, but the books themselves are absolutely amazing. So let's quickly talk about vitamin C and the issue with this study. So you have vitamin C from foods and you have vitamin C from supplementation. And in the studies, and this we looked at one study, but there are many. For instance, we know from history that scurvy is cured from vitamin C, but not from vitamin C supplementation, only from vitamin C from foods. So there has to be a disconnect here. If you can eat a lime, which was used to cure scurvy, and afterwards they used potatoes, to cure scurvy, actually cure it, not just stop it, but cure it. But 
you supplement with vitamin C and it does not have the same effect, then you must not have vitamin C in the supplement. It must not be the same thing, and that's exactly what is going on here. Not only is what you're getting in your vitamin C bottle not actually vitamin C, but it's not just worthless. It's actually a toxic poison, and it's actually a toxin that the body has to try to figure out how to deal with and eliminate. So if you look at your vitamin C bottle, if the manufacturer is honest, they will say ascorbic acid and vitamin C, insinuating that ascorbic acid is just the chemical name for vitamin C. This is not actually true. So vitamin C naturally occurs in fruits in two ascorbic forms with bioflavonoids and works synergistically with other vitamins and minerals inside the actual food. The non-food, the so-called natural, quote-unquote, ascorbic acid, which is anything but natural, is made by fermenting corn sugar, which is almost 100% GMO, into sorbitol, then hydro hydrogenating it until it turns into sorbose, then acetone, which is commonly referred to as nail polish remover, is added to break the molecular bonds, which creates isolated crystalline ascorbic acid. Garbage. Now, if you understand this, this doesn't sound like a vitamin, because it's not a vitamin. It's pure garbage. It does not contain both vitamin C forms, which are needed, nor does it contain bioflavonoids, which are needed. Thus, it is incomplete, and it cannot actually be called vitamin C, although it is referred to as vitamin C. It is not, in actuality, vitamin C. The patented vitamin C compounds that are touted as less acidic than ascorbic acid are also not vitamin C. It's important to understand that this is why this study concluded that ascorbic acid doesn't actually have a protective effect on the heart. In fact, it has a negative effect on the heart, which causes plaque buildup. Well, why does it cause plaque buildup? The reason is because the body has to deal with this garbage. It is garbage. You see, when a food has vitamins and minerals in it, those vitamins are packaged exactly in a way that your, your body can break them down and utilize them. When you take ascorbic acid, it needs specific elements present to actually work. And when they're not present, because you have an inorganic compound here that is not a complete vitamin, when it enters the body, it actually leaches these things it needs out of the body to try to complete the package. And this causes severe issues. And this is why, one of the reasons why, we've had so, many, so much issues with uh, bone deterioration in the U.S. because we've been feeding our people garbage touted as natural vitamins, specifically vitamin C and calcium are huge. And they've not only been not helping or not benefiting our bodies, they've actually been harming them. According to Royal Lee, what is a vitamin? He says that a working process consisting of the nutrient, enzymes, coenzymes, antioxidants, and trace mineral activators. Now, that word activators is an important part that people miss. You can have almost everything and not have the mineral activators. And only in a food, in a pure whole food, do you actually have all those things together in a package that the body can utilize. And this is an important point that I don't want you to miss. We have all these recommendations of how many milligrams and grams of vitamins and minerals we need. That Those numbers are garbage. They're not based on whole food. In fact, in a whole food, the amount of vitamin you actually need is extremely low in most cases because your body can utilize a huge percentage of what it gets out of the uh, food. For instance, you take a orange or a lime. Lime was used for curing scurvy. It didn't take 100 pounds of limes. 
it took a very small amount of lime to cure scurvy, a very small amount of vitamin C, what would be considered something like 10 to 20 milligrams. On the other hand, people are taking 500 milligrams of vitamin C and it's destroying their body because these 500 milligrams of vitamin C, it's not vitamin C, it's ascorbic acid, it's actually leaching enzymes and trace mineral activators out of the body. It's leaching these things out of the body to try to create something that is naturally in a food. So why buy this garbage? Well, it's cheap because it's junk. Now you may wonder, well, doesn't the FDA protect us? Don't they look over this stuff? Isn't there some sort of regulation? Before the FDA was founded, there was something called the Bureau of Chemistry. Up until 1912, the Bureau of Chemistry was headed by a man named Dr. Harvey W. Wiley. Here's a quote from Dr. Wiley that illustrates the position that the Bureau of Chemistry was in at that point. He says, no food product in our country would have any trace of benzoic acid, sulfuric acid, sulfites, or any alum or saccharin, save for medical purposes. No soft drink should it contain caffeine or thembramin. No bleached flour would enter interstate commerce. Our foods and drugs would be wholly without any form of adulteration and misbranding. The health of our people would be vastly improved and life greatly extended. The manufacturers of our food supply, and especially the millers, would devote their energies to improving the public health and promoting happiness in every home by the production of whole ground, unbolted cereal flours and meals. And the fact that this is no longer the case, this is not how we produce our grains, and our cereals is the reason we have an issue with gluten intolerance. It's not that people are gluten intolerant. People are intolerant of how gluten, how the grains are produced, manufactured, and um, processed. And that's what's creating a gluten intolerant atmosphere. That was the Bureau of Chemistry, which was the precursor of the FDA. Let's look at how it changed. Elmer Nelson of the FDA, when it, after it transitioned, said this nonsense. Elmer Nelson, who was a doctor, said, It is wholly unscientific to state that a well-fed body is more able to resist the disease than a poorly fed body. My overall opinion is that there hasn't been enough experimentation to prove that dietary deficiencies make one susceptible to disease. Now, I think we can all agree that this guy has no clue what he was talking about. But this is kind of the idea of the FDA. So let's recap. Ascorbic acid, which is the vitamin C supplement, it's what you would buy if you go on Amazon or go to Walmart or a drug store and you get a vitamin C supplement. It's going to be ascorbic acid. It's an isolate. It's a fraction. It's a distillate of a naturally occurring vitamin C. It is not vitamin C. It is a part of and a synthetic part of what makes up vitamin C. In addition to ascorbic acid, vitamin C must include rudin, bioflavonoids, factor K, factor J, factor P, tyrosinase, ascorbinogen, and other components as shown. And I'll try to put them in the video for you. In addition to this, vitamin C actually needs mineral cofactors, which must be available in proper amounts in order for the vitamin to have activity. In other words, it needs these mineral cofactors to actually activate, for the body to actually use it. And when it doesn't have these mineral cofactors, it will leach them out of the body, which is a major issue. So what actually happens when you eat the food is it actually has these mineral cofactors. It actually has them in proper amounts where when you eat an orange, vitamin C is not leaching anything from the body to make a complete active vitamin. It's all there. So your body is just digesting it very smoothly, very easily, assimilating the minerals, assimilating the vitamins, and the healing properties. And it can eliminate what it doesn't need, but it doesn't hurt the body at all. You can eat all the oranges, all the limes, all the vitamin C in a food you want, and you will never have a disease from it. You will never have a disease from it. In fact, high amounts of vitamin C from foods has actually been shown to possibly cure cancer and many other diseases. So ascorbic acid is actually a 
quote unquote, antioxidant wrapper. It's a portion of vitamin C. It is not vitamin C. And in fact, ascorbic acid sold in supplements is not even ascorbic acid. It's a synthetic ascorbic acid. So it's not even that anymore. When it was originally discovered, it was legitimate ascorbic acid. It was actually extracted from red peppers. But they found that that was actually far more expensive than creating a synthetic version. So they created a synthetic version, which is pure, pure garbage. So as I close this out, ascorbic acid is a chemical copy of a naturally occurring ascorbic acid, which is itself, even the natural ascorbic acid, is only a fraction of the actual vitamin C. So again, when it's taken, it, is, it will leach what it needs from your body to make a complete and not only that but the body will treat it as a toxin and it has to it and it leads to strain and stress on your elimination organs your liver and as we learn from the study it creates plaque buildup the discoverer of vitamin c himself actually taught that ascorbic acid cannot actually confer vitamin activity he actually found that it could not cure scurvy he found that it was inferior to eating vitamin C rich foods. So I would encourage you if you were taking a vitamin C supplement, if your doctor has you on a vitamin C supplement, talk to them about the effects of vitamin C supplementation and how it is not real vitamin C. I would encourage you to find whole foods, oranges, limes, uh, even potatoes have vitamin C in them. There's many foods that are rich in vitamin C. Get your vitamin C from them. You do not even need to eat a ton of them to get the amount of vitamin C you need. But you will not be able to overdose on an orange, a lime, a tangerine, a potato. But you can overdose on ascorbic acid and it can cause major issues, even a heart attack. So I'd encourage you to be wise. I'll be doing more videos on this subject. I will be talking about vitamin A, vitamin E in the synthetics, vitamin D in the synthetics, and how these actually interact with our bodies and how we need to get back to a whole plant-based diet. If you are interested in this subject, comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions regarding vitamins, vitamin C, if anything was unclear, just let me know in the comments. You can shoot me a message on YouTube. I'll do my best to answer those. If you appreciated the video, please share it on Facebook, on Twitter with your friends. Let them know that they're killing themselves with vitamin C supplements because you care about them, right? Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a